The Amber Diceless Role Playing Game is a role playing game created and written by Eric Wojcik, set in the fictional universe created by author Roger Zelazny for his Chronicles of Amber. The game is unusual in that no dice are used in resolving conflicts or player actions, instead, a simple diceless system of comparative ability. A narrative description of the action by the players and game master is used to determine how situations are resolved. Amber DRPG was created in the 1980s and is much more focused on relationships and role playing than most of the role playing games of that era. Most Amber characters are members of the two ruling classes in the Amber multiverse and are much more advanced in matters of strength, endurance, psyche, warfare, and sorcery than ordinary beings. This often means that the only individuals who are capable of opposing a character are from his or her family, a fact that leads to much suspicion and intrigue. Eric Wojcik offered to design an amber role-playing game for West End Games, who agreed to look at his work. Wojcik intended to integrate the feel of the amber setting from the novels into a role-playing game, and playtested his system for a few months at the Michigan Gaming Center where he decided to try it out as a diceless game. West End was not interested in a diceless role-playing game, so Wojcik acquired the RPG rights to Amber and took the game to Artalsorian Games, until he withdrew over creative differences. Wojcik then founded Phage Press, and published Amber Diceless Roleplaying in 1991. The original 256-page game book was published in 1991 by Phage Press, covering material from the first five novels and some details, Sorcery and the Logris, from the remaining five novels in order to allow players to roleplay characters from the Courts of Chaos. Some details were changed slightly to allow more player choice, for example, players can be full Trump artists without having walked the pattern or the Logris. Which Merlin says is impossible, and players' psychic abilities are far greater than those shown in the books. Cover of Shadow Knight a 256-page companion volume, Shadow Knight, was published in 1993. This supplemental rule book includes the remaining elements from the Merlin novels, such as broken patterns, and allows players to create constructs such as Merlin's ghost wheel. The book presents the second series of novels not as additions to the series continuity but as an example of a role-playing campaign with Merlin, Luke, Julia, Jurt and Coral as the PCs. The remainder of the book is a collection of essays on the game, statistics for the new characters and an update of the older ones in light of their appearance in the second series and plot summaries of each of the 10 books. The book includes some material from the short story The Salesman's Tale, and some unpublished material cut from Prince of Chaos, notably Coral's Pregnancy by Merlin. Both books were translated into French and published by Jules Descartes in 1994 and 1995. A third book, Ribma, was promised. Cover art was commissioned and pre-orders were taken, but it was never published. Wojcik also expressed a desire to create a book giving greater detail to the Courts of Chaos. The publishing rights to the Amber DRPG games were acquired in 2004 by Guardians of Order, who took over sales of the game and announced their intention to release a new edition of the game. However, no new edition was released before Guardians of Order went out of business in 2006. The two existing books are now out of print, but they have been made available as PDF downloads. In June 2007 a new publishing company, headed by Edwin Voskamp and Eric Todd, was formed with the express purpose of bringing Amber DRPG back into print. The new company is named Diceless by Design. In May 2010, Wright Publishing secured a license from Diceless by Design to use the rules system with a new setting in the creation of a new product to be written by industry and system veteran Jason Durrell. The project Lords of Gossamer and Shadow was funded via Kickstarter in May 2013. In Sept 2013 the project was completed, and on in November 2013 Lords of Gossamer and Shadow was released publicly in full-color print and PDF, along with additional supplements and continued support. The game is set in the multiverse described in Zelazny's Chronicles of Amber. The first book assumes that game masters will set their campaigns after the Patternfall War, that is, after the end of the fifth book in the series, The Courts of Chaos. But uses material from the following books to describe those parts of Zelazny's cosmology that were featured there in more detail. The Amber Multiverse consists of Amber, a city at one pole of the universe wherein is found the pattern, the symbol of order, the courts of chaos, an assembly of worlds at the other pole where can be found the Logris. The manifestation of chaos, and the abyss, the source or end of all reality, and shadow, the collection of all possible universes between and around them. Inhabitants of either pole can use one or both of the pattern and the Logris to travel through shadow. 
It is assumed that players will portray the children of the main characters from the books, the ruling family of Amber, known as the Elder Amberites, or a resident of the courts. However, since some feel that being the children of the main characters is too limiting, it is fairly common to either start with King Oberon's death before. The book begins and roleplay the Elder Amberites as they vie for the throne, or to populate Amber from scratch with a different set of Elder Amberites. The former option is one presented in the book, the latter is known in the Amber community as an Amethyst game. A third option is to have the players portray Corwin's children, in an Amber-like city built around Corwin's pattern, this is sometimes called an Argent game, since one of Corwin's heraldic colors is silver. Characters in Amber DRPG are represented by four attributes, Psyche, Strength, Endurance, and Warfare. The attributes run from minus 25, through minus 10 and 0, upwards without limit. Scores above 0 are ranked, with the highest score being ranked first, the next highest second, and so on. The character with first rank in each attribute is considered superior in that attribute, being considered to be substantially better than the character with second rank even if the difference in scores is small. All else being equal, a character with a higher rank in an attribute will always win a contest based on that attribute. The attribute auction a character's ability scores are purchased during character creation in an auction. Players get 100 character points, and bid on each attribute in turn. The character who bids the most for an attribute is ranked first and is considered superior to all other characters in that attribute. Unlike conventional auctions, bids are non-refundable. If one player bids 65 for Psyche and another wins with a bid of 66, then the character with 66 is superior to the character with 65 even though there is only one bid difference. Instead, lower bidding characters are ranked in ascending order according to how much they have bid, the characters becoming progressively weaker in that attribute as they pay less for it. After the auction, players can secretly pay extra points to raise their ranks, but they can only pay to raise their scores to an existing rank. Further, a character with a bid for rank is considered to have a slight advantage over character with a bought-up rank. The auction simulates a history of competition between the descendants of Oberon for player characters who have not had dozens of decades to get to know each other. Through the competitive auction, characters may begin the game vying for standings. The auction serves to introduce some unpredictability into character creation without the need to resort to dice, cards, or other randomizing devices. A player may intend, for example, to create a character who is a strong, mighty warrior, but being outplayed in the auction may result in lower attribute scores than anticipated, therefore necessitating a change of character concept. Since a player cannot control another player's bids, and since all bids are non-refundable, the auction involves a considerable amount of strategizing and prioritization by players. A willingness to spend as many points as possible on an attribute may improve your chances of a high ranking, but too reckless a spending strategy could leave a player with few points to spend on powers and objects. In a hotly contested auction, such as for the important attribute of warfare, the most valuable skill is the ability to force one's opponents to back down. With two or more equally determined players, this can result in a bidding war, in which the attribute is driven up by increments to large sums. An alternative strategy is to try to cow other players into submission with a high opening bid. Most players bid low amounts between 1 and 10 points in an initial bid in order to feel out the competition and to save points for other uses. A high enough opening bid could signal a player's determination to be first ranked in that attribute, thereby dissuading others from competing. Psyche and Amber DRPG compared to the Chronicles characters with high Psyche are presented as having strong telepathic abilities, being able to hypnotize and even mentally dominate any character with lesser Psyche with whom they can make eye contact. This is likely due to three scenes in the Chronicles, first, when Eric paralyzes Corwin with an attack across the trump and refuses to desist because one or the other would be dominated, second, when Corwin faces the demon Strigald Wire. It is able to wrestle mentally with him when their gazes meet, and third, when Fiona is able to keep Brand immobile in the final battle at the Courts of Chaos. However, in general, the books only feature mental battles when there is some reason for mind-to-mind -mind contact and magic or Trump is involved in all three of the above conflicts, so it is not clear. Whether Zelazny intended his characters to have such a power, the combination of Brand's living Trump powers and his high psyche would have guaranteed him victory over Corwin. Shadow Knight does address this inconsistency somewhat, by presenting the living Trump abilities as somewhat limited. Characters in Amber DRPG have access to the powers seen in the Chronicles of Amber, Pattern, Logris, Shapeshifting, Trump, and Magic. Each of the first four powers is available in an advanced form. 
while a character with pattern, logris or conjuration can acquire virtually any object, players can choose to spend character points to obtain objects with particular virtues, unbreakability, or a mind of their own. Since they have paid points for the items, they are a part of the character's legend, and cannot lightly be destroyed. Similarly, a character can find any possible universe, but they can spend character points to know of or inhabit shadows which are real and therefore useful. The expansion, Shadow Knight, adds constructs, artifacts with connections to shadows. Unspent character points become good stuff, a good luck for the character. Players are also allowed to overspend, with the points becoming bad stuff, bad luck which the game master should inflict on the character. Stuff governs how non-player characters perceive and respond to the character, characters with good stuff will often receive friendly or helpful reactions, while characters with bad stuff are often treated with suspicion or hostility. As well as representing luck, stuff can be seen as representing a character's outlook on the universe, characters with good stuff seeing the multiverse as a cheerful place, while characters with bad stuff see it as hostile. In any given fair conflict between two characters, the character with the higher score and the relevant attribute will eventually win. The key words here are fair and eventually, if character's ranks are close, and the weaker character has obtained some advantage, then the weaker character can escape defeat or perhaps prevail. Close ranks result in longer contests while greater difference between ranks result in fast resolution. Alternatively, if character's attribute ranks are close, the weaker character can try to change the relevant attribute by changing the nature of the conflict. For example, if two characters are wrestling the relevant attribute as strength, a character could reveal a weapon, changing it to warfare, they could try to overcome the other character's mind using a power. Changing it to psych, or they could concentrate their strength on defense, changing it to endurance. If there is a substantial difference between characters' ranks, the conflict is generally over before the weaker character can react. Amber DRPG advises game masters to change rules as they see fit, even to the point of adding or removing powers or attributes. In the June 1992 edition of Dragon, both Lester Smith and Alan Varney published reviews of this game. Lloyd Blankenship reviewed Amber and Pyramid No. 2, and stated that Amber is a valuable resource to a GM, even if he isn't running an Amber game. For gamers who have an aspiring actor or actress lurking within their breast. Or for someone running a campaign via electronic mail or message base, Amber should be given serious consideration. Despite the game's out-of-print status, a thriving convention scene exists supporting the game. Amber conventions, known as Ambercons, are held yearly in Massachusetts, Michigan, Portland, Milton Keynes, Belfast and Modena, Italy. Additionally, Phage Press published 12 volumes of a dedicated Amber DRPG magazine called Amberzine. Some Amberzine issues are still available from Phage Press. Thanks for watching.